So today we are in my home country, Aotearoa, and we're doing something super special. We are doing the hangi. Now I've been requested to do this a lot of times on social media, and I didn't want to do it until I came home and we can do it properly. So we're with the, the legend Riwi, the hangi master. We'll introduce you in a second, and we're going to show you all about the hangi. Let's get stuck in. So this is Riwi. Kia ora, brother. Hey, brother. Thank Good you nice so week. much for having awesome. us. Really appreciate it. Riwi, I, I, every time I talk to any of my chef mates or anyone I knew in the industry about hangi in New Zealand, they said, oh, you're doing it with Riwi? And everyone was like, yeah. They were super excited that we are doing it with this guy. So he's an absolute legend in New Zealand, and we really appreciate uh, you having us here today. Would you mind just telling us about the significance of this spot in particular? Yeah, so this is the first time we we're actually cooking in these pits, and this is the first community hangi pit in New Zealand. Any ethnicity actually can come here and actually book the hangi with one of our team, yep. and they'll guide them through the process. That's the beauty of sharing this uh, this is the oldest dish in New Zealand. So Māori come from Polynesia, uh, came down over the Pacific, and uh, this navigator, his name was Kupe. He started cooking hangi back then, so he's the guy who gave Aotearoa the name, the land of the long white cloud. Today there's a lot of white cloud up there, bro. <laughs> the significance of this mountain here, this was actually a living village right up to the 1860s. So this is probably the first hangi done on this mountain since 1860, so it's, it's quite, a, yeah. quite a historical day, mate. So yeah, you're yeah. lucky you're a part of it. Bro. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. We've uh, we've actually been here for about an hour and a half already. It was a bit dark, so um, we'll go through the techniques. Yeah, sure. So the wood, the timber that we're using is manuka, so that'll heat the rocks. We need those rocks to get up to 700 Celsius. The meat uh, will always go on the hottest side of the uh, pit, and the veg on the opposite side. And um, feel free to boss me around, brother. Happy to jump on a shovel. Get on that shovel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these are these are stainless steel baskets. Yep. So we're just burning them off yeah, right. um, on top of the rocks. That'll sterilise them, and then um, we can actually put the leaves on them, and then the food. And uh, and you do this every time. Yes, every time. Traditionally, we use Nico fronds instead of steel. You know, it's so handy this uh, day and age. So yeah, <laughs> we've got stainless steel. Why not? So today's video is sponsored by the legends over at Foodbox. I've been working with Foodbox for a couple of months now. Uh, they're based in New Zealand. Think of it as an online farmer's market. We can get all the beautiful produce that the restaurants and cafes get around Auckland and the Upper North Island delivered straight to your door. Use code ANDY15 for 15% off your first order at foodbox.co.nz now. Let's get back to the hungi. So, Kumara, I guess that's the, one of the most important things for a hungi. Yep. Certainly is. Um, these are different varieties. They're obviously, they're um, South American. Yep. But actually, there's, uh, there's one called Tutai Kuri, which means dog shit. <laughs> and um, it does look like dog shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, so well, we're going to start chopping up, bro. Cool, bro. How big? Um, you know, Māori size. Ma <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we put in? So today we're, we've got a bit of uh, butternut. I mean, traditionally we would have, um, our veg that we did have in the hangi would have been kumara. And um, we had a yam as well. And taro actually. So we had taro that uh, we brought down from the islands. And always meat and seafood as well, or not uh, really? Yeah, it was mainly just fish and birds. Yeah, so right. we had a lot of birds. Yeah. Hangi still is, is a, uh, probably the number one style of cooking yeah. for a large group of people. Yeah, yeah. How much could we feed with this amount of veg? Easily uh, feed uh, a good 30 people with yeah, this yeah. amount of veg. Yeah. Tell us about, about the name Hangi itself. Yeah, so Hangi itself, um, the ha, the first part of the word Hangi, ha, refers to the essence or the, the breath of life. And the ngi, ha ngi, uh, refers to the internal spark of, of the land. Okay. And so we believe the land is um, Papatunuku or Mother Earth. And this is like uh, the internal spark of Papatunuku. So she's nurturing us, feeding us. Yep. And um, that's why um, hangi, um, it's important we still do it in this tradition. And to be honest, um, hangi is becoming a, a a dying art, mm. uh, which is really sad. So I was fortunate to be taught by my father, who was taught by my grandfather. I, I'm still using some of the hangi stones from my grandfather. Incredible. The techniques have come through, and so when I share that knowledge with the likes of Nico and these other young fellas, yep. um, they'll carry on that tradition and teach their their children and their grandchildren. Let's celebrate it. Yeah. Let's get, let's get a, have a feed then. <laughs> so we wrap everything in cheesecloth. 
Yep, so yep. Um, that's just a modern way of uh, it not going everywhere in yeah, the pit. Yeah, yep. uh, traditionally, we would have used um, Nico leaves, fronds, and they're plaited up into yep. baskets. Yep. So this is a kawa kawa. Kawa kawa. I'll get you to chop this up. So this this is um, it's part of the carver. We're going to throw that through our potatoes. Look at that. That's going to have a nice pepper flavour when we pull it out of the pit. All right, so brother, what are we going to line these baskets with? This uh, leaf here is called puka, and it's the Māori tinfoil. <laughs> so we're basically just going to line the basket um, like so. This is going to protect anything from sticking. So lamb shoulders down first, skin side down, brother, yeah? Yep. Yep. Yeah, breast down. Yep, they'll sit in there nicely. Beautiful. We're on the stuffing now, I think. Okay, cool. Stuffing, I'm guessing this is a more modern, I guess, yep. invention to the hungi. Yeah, I th yeah, it totally is, but it just, in the pit, it's got that smokiness. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Just gonna add a, an awesome flavour to stuffing. Yeah. It's be the best stuffing you taste in your life, I mate. I bet, brother, I bet. Meat on the hot side. This is just calico. Coffee sacks. Grab a spade, bro. All right. Cover it up. Basically, now we're trapping the steam in. Yep. And um, the meat on the bottom is actually going to be crispy, so we'll still get a bit of crackle. We'll put water in, so that's going to steam through the process. Just let it do its magic, brother. Two hours time, we're eating some good kai. All right, brother, two hours later, let's dig this thing up, eh? Yep, let's get into it. Hopefully you've cooked it well, bro. <laughs> it's certainly a good sign when it's this hot. Yep. Enough steam. So this pit will uh, feed up to 400 people. It's a lot of mouths. Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, mm. look at that. She's hot. Smells delicious, bro. Just see how soft that is. Oh, look at that. It yeah. smells kind of smoky and earthy and so yep. good. There we go. It doesn't look that flash till we open it up. Oh, the stuffing. She's caramelised with yeah. that butter. Yeah. Kumo looks beautiful. The colours there. Yeah. Look at that. Like butter. Oh. Don't forget we put butter in it. <laughs> this is the butternut. Yep. And this has got the kawa kawa running through it as well. This should just fall apart. And then the smoke, look at that, look at it's that. just pulled. Yeah, still so juicy too, huh? Cool. Should we eat some? We shall. Yeah, yeah bro, I'll serve you, mate. Thank you, brother. Look at that, it's falling apart. Yeah. Everyone's hungry uh, <laughs> over there, eh? There's a lot of hungry mouths over there at the moment. And that was only uh, just about two hours. Yeah, yeah. In the pit, look at that drum there. Yeah. There you go, brother. Thank you, brother. Bit of that, bit of colour, the favourite stuffing, and a little bit of cabbage. Thank you, brother. Look at that. Beautiful. Get in there. Oh. Yeah, you're not wrong. And look at that. That lamb is just... Mm. Got the flavour there? Yeah, bro, that's absolutely delicious. It's not, it's not overpowering at all. No, yeah. really nicely seasoned. Tastes like the earth it came from. A little bit smoky, it's beautiful. Awesome, brother. Thank you, brother. Too much. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Awesome, bro. Kill the break. Thank you, bro. Come eat, guys. Come get some food. Don't be shy. Get some cabbage. Serviettes. I've even got salt and pepper. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Thank you, eh? good. You're welcome. Give that one a little skinny boy. <laughs> All right. 